In the shadowed lands of Striden, on the edge of the declining Roman Empire around 347 AD, a child was born who would ascend to intellectual and spiritual heights far beyond the confines of his rustic beginnings. Jerome, this child of Dalmatia, was introduced to the world in tumultuous times, an era where the old pagan traditions grappled with the emerging Christian faith and the Roman Empire itself stood on the precarious verge of transformation. Jerome's family, though Christian, was ensconced in a society where the vestiges of paganism still lingered like the last whispers of a fading dream. His parents, ensuring he received the education befitting a Roman citizen, planted the seeds of his illustrious future. Jerome, a precocious and spirited child, exhibited an insatiable hunger for knowledge. His keen intellect and tireless curiosity were like a beacon, drawing him towards the vast expanse of human thought and divine mystery. As Jerome grew, so did his thirst for the wisdom of the ages. His education commenced under the tutelage of local scholars, but the horizons of Striden could no longer contain his burgeoning aspirations. The vibrant heart of Rome called to him. A siren song of promise and potential, urging him towards its storied streets, where the pillars and scrolls of the ancient world awaited his eager grasp. Arriving in Rome, the young Dalmatian was thrust into a world of contrasts, opulence and squalor, piety and decadence, wisdom and folly. This bustling metropolis, the zenith of human conquest and ambition, became Jerome's crucible. Under the guidance of renowned teachers like Elias Donatus, Jerome's mind was sharpened like a blade, cutting through rhetoric, philosophy and the classics with voracious intensity. Yet the glittering allure of Rome's libertine lifestyle dazzled the young scholar tempting him with its hedonistic pleasures. In this cauldron of indulgence, a pivotal moment beckoned. Encounters with devout Christians and the sacred scriptures stirred a turmoil within Jerome, a battle between the desires of the flesh and the yearnings of the spirit. It was here, amidst the grandeur and decay of Rome, that the seeds of divine discontent were sown in his heart, propelling Jerome towards a decision that would redefine his life. Thus, Jerome stood at the crossroads of destiny, his soul aflame with a nascent conviction. His baptism, around 366 AD, was not merely a rite of passage but a rebirth, the shedding of an old self and the embracement of a new path fraught with challenges and imbued with purpose. This spiritual awakening marked the end of Jerome's early years and the beginning of a journey that would lead him far from the marble and mire of Rome, into deserts, across seas, towards a legacy that would endure for millennia. In the fabric of Christian history, the early years of Jerome are a testament to the transformative power of faith and learning. From the humble beginnings in a frontier town to the intellectual fervor of Rome, Jerome's journey began as a quest for worldly knowledge but evolved into a pilgrimage of spiritual discovery, setting the stage for the profound impact he would have on the Christian world. In the heart of the Eternal City, amidst its soaring marble and the ceaseless thrum of its bustling streets, Jerome arrived a young man from the provinces, his eyes alight with the fire of ambition and a thirst for knowledge. Rome, the jewel of the empire, sprawled before him, a labyrinth of wisdom, vice, and opulence that promised to both elevate and imperil his soul. As Jerome wandered the forums and libraries where the air was thick with the scent of vellum and the murmurs of the learned, he was intoxicated by the banquet of knowledge Rome offered. Each scroll, each lecture was a siren call to a mind as voracious as his. The rhetoricians and philosophers, in their flowing togas, spun webs of words that captivated him, drawing him deeper into the world of pagan intellect and eloquence. Yet for all its splendor, Rome's brilliance cast long shadows, the city's decadence, its hedonistic pulse, beat with a rhythm that lured Jerome away from his ascetic ideals. He found himself ensnared by the very pleasures he had vowed to forsake, his resolve melting like wax before the dual suns of intellectual vanity and earthly desire. It was within this crucible of contradiction that Jerome's spirit waged its fiercest battles.
Wrestling with the dual allegiance to his Christian faith and the pagan philosophies that enthralled him, he stood at the precipice of spiritual despair, but Rome, for all its temptations, also harbored a nascent Christian community. A beacon of hope amidst the spiritual tumult, the simplicity and sincerity of the Christian truth, embodied in the lives of the devout, whispered to Jerome of a different path, one that led away from the ephemeral towards the eternal. One night, under the cloak of Rome's moonlit sky, Jerome was visited by a vision so profound it seared the very fabric of his being. Before him stood the figure of Christ, a presence both terrifying in its majesty and tender in its mercy. Jerome was accused, not by a voice of thunder, but with a whisper that cut deeper than any sword, of betraying the love of God for the allure of Cicero. In this moment of divine reckoning the scales fell from his eyes and he saw the hollowness of his pursuits, the vanity of his intellect. The morning after the world seemed a different place to Jerome. The libraries that had once been his temples now felt like mausoleums, housing the dead thoughts of men who sought only earthly glory. The scriptures, in contrast, became to him as springs in the desert, their words a balm to his parched soul. His conversion was thus not a momentary capitulation but a radical transformation, a reorientation of his life's purpose from the pursuit of human approval to the quest for divine truth. Jerome's subsequent departure from Rome was as much an escape from its snares as it was a pilgrimage towards purification. He left behind the accolades and the acclaim, the debates and the decadence, carrying with him only the resolve to seek a holier path. His time in Rome had been a chapter of tempests, a period of profound turmoil that had paradoxically prepared him for the trials and triumphs that lay ahead. In the annals of his life, Rome would remain etched as a place of profound contradiction, a beacon of learning that both ensnared and liberated, a crucible in which the scholar was consumed and reborn as a sage. Jerome's journey through its storied streets was a testament to the power of divine grace to transform the wandering scholar into a steadfast servant of the word, setting the stage for his monumental legacy in the annals of Christian history. Amidst the stark expanse of the Syrian desert, Jerome stood alone a figure of contemplation against the backdrop of sun-scorched sands and windswept solitude. The transition from the grandeur of Rome to the desolation of the wilderness was not just a physical journey but a spiritual odyssey, an exodus from the clamor of the world, into the silent depths of the cell. The austerity of the desert, its harsh beauty and unforgiving climate mirrored the asceticism that Jerome sought to embrace. Here, amidst the rocky outcroppings and shifting dunes, he shed the trappings of his former life, the garments of scholarly acclaim, the temptations of the flesh, the echoes of Rome's decadence. Clad in the coarse garb of a penitent, his only companions, the whispering winds and the scuttling lizards, Jerome embarked on a regimen of self-denial and prayer. Days melted into nights, nights into days, as Jerome's ascetic wanderings deepened his communion with God and with the mysteries of his own soul. Fasting became his sustenance, solitude his solace, and prayer his ceaseless refrain. The desert, with its stark grandeur and relentless silence, was a crucible in which vanity and pride were burned away, leaving behind a vessel purified by suffering and yearning. In the shadows of twilight, when the heat of the day yielded to the cool embrace of night, Jerome would kneel upon the cold stones, his body bowed in supplication, his mind attuned to the whispers of eternity. It was in these moments of profound vulnerability that he encountered the demons that haunted his conscience, the doubts that gnawed at his faith, the specters of his former life that sought to draw him back into the embrace of complacency. One night, as the stars blazed like celestial torches in the ink-black sky, Jerome was assailed by a vision, a vision of Christ, not in glory but in agony, bearing the weight of the world's sins upon his bruised and bleeding back. The vision seared itself into Jerome's consciousness, imprinting upon his soul the reality of human suffering and divine redemption. In that moment he understood that the path of asceticism was not one of self-abnegation for its own sake but a means to partake in the sufferings of Christ, to share in the redemptive work of the cross. Thus, amidst the desolation of the desert, Jerome found a renewal of purpose, a rekindling of the fire that had first ignited his quest for truth and salvation. The ascetic wanderings, far from being a flight from the world, were a journey towards a deeper intimacy with God and a clearer vision of his own frail humanity, each step in.
The shifting sands, each breath of the scorching wind, was a prayer, an offering of self in the crucible of divine love. When at last Jerome emerged from the desert, his body emaciated, his eyes illumined with a zeal that burned like a desert sun, he was not the same man who had entered its confines. The ascetic wanderings had transformed him, had tempered his soul in the furnace of divine love, preparing him for the challenges and triumphs that awaited him in the larger arena of the Christian world. Jerome, the scholar ascetic, had discovered in the wastelands of the desert a wellspring of grace that would sustain him in the battles yet to come. In the annals of his life, the ascetic wanderings would stand as a testament to the power of solitude and suffering to refine the human spirit, to strip away the masks of pretense and reveal the naked soul in its quest for communion with the divine. Jerome's sojourn in the desert was a chapter of transformation, a desert bloom that blossomed in the arid wilderness of contemplation, bearing the fruit of wisdom and humility that would enrich the Christian tradition for generations to come. In the shadow of Bethlehem's ancient walls, amidst the hallowed ground where the Savior of mankind was said to have been born, Jerome found his sanctuary a monastic retreat that would become both his haven and his crucible. The transition from the stark asceticism of the desert to the bustling hospitality of the monastery was not merely a change of scenery but a shift in his spiritual pilgrimage, a new chapter in the chronicle of his quest for holiness. The Bethlehem Monastery perched on a gentle slope overlooking the terraced fields and olive groves was a refuge from the world and a gateway to the divine. Here, amidst the whitewashed walls and the whispering cypresses, Jerome embraced a life of scholarly asceticism, combining the rigors of penitential practice with the delights of intellectual pursuit. His cell, a small chamber illuminated by a single oil lamp, became his scriptorium and his oratory, the place where he communed with God and with the sacred texts that he sought to translate and elucidate. The scholarly hermit of Bethlehem was a figure of contradictions, a man who spurned the comforts of earthly existence yet reveled in the richness of intellectual engagement. His days were a tapestry woven with threads of prayer and study, of fasting and writing, of contemplation and debate. The monastery with its rhythm of chants and silences, of toil and rest, provided the backdrop against which Jerome's inner struggles and triumphs were played out. In the dim pre-dawn hours before the roosters heralded the new day, Jerome would be found bent over his manuscripts, the nib of his quill scratching out the words of the sacred texts with a fervor that bordered on ecstasy. The words of Hebrew prophets and Greek apostles, of Latin poets and Christian fathers, danced before his eyes, demanding to be transmuted into the vernacular of the common people. The task of translating the Bible into the language of the masses was not merely a scholarly exercise for Jerome. It was a mission, a calling to make the Word of God accessible to all who sought its solace and its wisdom. But the life of a scholarly hermit was not all ink and parchment. In the bustling scriptorium of his mind, Jerome wrestled with doubts and fears, with the specters of his past and the uncertainties of his future. The ghosts of Rome, with their whispers of ambition and vanity, haunted his solitude, reminding him of the dangers of pride and presumption, the controversies that raged within the Christian community, the theological debates and ecclesiastical intrigues, cast a shadow over his scholarly pursuits, testing the fortitude of his faith and the clarity of his vision. Yet in the hush of night, when the monastery was enveloped in silence and the constellations glittered like diamonds in the velvet sky, Jerome found solace in the words of the psalmist, in the cadences of his own prayers, his solitary vigils, his lonely meditations became a dialogue with the divine, a communion with the eternal mysteries that lay beyond the veil of mortal sight. And so the scholarly hermit of Bethlehem labored on, his quill scratching out the words of scripture, his soul aflame with a zeal that consumed the dross of his human frailty. Each stroke of the pen, each prayer whispered in the darkness, was a step closer to the fulfillment of his sacred mission, to the realization of his deepest, longing to be a vessel of truth, a conduit of grace, a beacon of light in a world shrouded in shadow. In the annals of Christian history, the scholarly hermit of Bethlehem would be remembered as a figure of paradox and piety, of intellectual brilliance and spiritual depth. His life in the monastery was a testament to the power of scholarship and asceticism to harmonize in the pursuit of divine truth, to blend the rigors of the mind with the yearnings of the soul.
Jerome's sojourn in Bethlehem was a chapter of enlightenment, a sanctuary of transformation, a cradle of wisdom that rocked the Christian world with its intellectual and spiritual legacy. In the dim glow of his solitary scriptorium, amidst the flickering light of his oil lamp, Jerome hovered over the sacred text like a guardian angel, his brow furrowed in intense concentration, his hand wielding the quill with a precision that bespoke reverence and urgency. The task that lay before him was monumental, a labor of love and devotion that transcended mere scholarship. It was the translation of the Bible into the language of the people, a work that would shape the course of Christian history for centuries to come. The creation of the Vulgate was not merely a scholarly endeavor for Jerome. It was a sacred duty, a vocation that demanded a complete surrender of his intellect and his soul to the divine. The Hebrew scrolls and Greek manuscripts that lay before him were not just dead letters on parchment. They were living voices, echoing through the corridors of time with a resonance that stirred the depths of his being. Each word, each phrase, each nuance of meaning was scrutinized and pondered, not for the sake of erudition but for the sake of revelation. As the months turned into years, the scriptorium became a sanctuary of toil and transcendence, a battleground where the forces of doubt and inspiration waged a ceaseless war. The words of scripture, with their cryptic symbolism and profound mysteries, often seemed to elude Jerome's grasp, slipping through his fingers like desert sand. Yet in those moments of despair and desolation, when the inkwell ran dry and the quill trembled in his hand, Jerome turned to prayer, to fasting, to the wellspring of grace that sustained him in his darkest hours. One night, as the wind howled outside his window and the shadows danced upon the walls, Jerome experienced a revelation, a vision of the heavens opening, of angels descending in a shimmering cascade of light, bearing scrolls inscribed with words that glowed like embers in the darkness. The voice of God, like thunder and whispers intertwined, spoke to him of the sanctity of his task, of the significance of his sacrifice, of the impact his work would have on the souls of future generations. From that moment on, Jerome's translation of the Bible took on a quality of inspiration that transcended the boundaries of mere human scholarship. The Hebrew scriptures, with their ancient wisdom and prophetic fire, surrendered their secrets to him. The Greek gospels, with their tales of redemption and grace, found a new eloquence in his Latin prose. The Vulgate, as it came to be known, was not just a translation but a transformation, a transmutation of scripture into a language that pulsed with vitality and power. And when at last the Vulgate was completed, when the final words were inked onto the vellum, Jerome knew that he had done more than fulfill a commission he had forged a legacy that would endure long after his mortal flesh had returned to dust. The Vulgate was not just a text but a testament, a witness to the enduring power of faith and the transcendent beauty of divine revelation. In the annals of Christian history, the creation of the Vulgate would be remembered as a triumph of intellect and spirit, of scholarship and sanctity. Jerome's labor of translation was not just a scholastic achievement but a sacred mission, a proclamation of the word made flesh in the language of the people. The Vulgate was a testament to the enduring power of scripture to transform lives, to illuminate minds, and to bind hearts to the eternal truths that lie beyond the veil of mortal existence. Amidst the whispers of praise and the murmurs of admiration that followed in the wake of the Vulgate's completion, there also arose a tempest of controversies and conflicts that threatened to engulf Jerome in a maelstrom of theological discord. The translation of the Bible into the vernacular had not merely stirred the hearts of the faithful, it had also provoked the ire of those who saw in Jerome's work a challenge to their authority and a threat to their doctrines. The controversies began with whispers and insinuations that echoed through the corridors of power and the halls of ecclesiastical authority. Jerome's adherence to a strict interpretation of Scripture, his rejection of the allegorical readings favored by some of his contemporaries, his insistence on the primacy of the original texts over later translations, all of these stances earned him both admirers and detractors, allies and adversaries.
The theological debates that had simmered beneath the surface of Christian discourse now erupted into open conflict, with Jerome at the center of the storm, the Arian controversy, the originist disputes, the Pelagian heresies, each of these theological flashpoints put Jerome on the front line of the battle for doctrinal purity and orthodoxy. His sharp wit and sharper tongue, his uncompromising integrity and uncompromising zeal made him a formidable opponent and a divisive figure within the Christian community. But it was not merely theological controversies that beset Jerome. Personal conflicts and interpersonal rivalries also threatened to undermine his authority and his legacy. The letters that he penned with a fervor that bordered on fury, the treatises that he composed with a clarity that bordered on acerbity, often inflamed the passions of those whom he sought to instruct and correct. His relationships with his friends and foes alike were marked by a candor that bordered on bluntness, a sincerity that bordered on severity. And yet, in the crucible of controversies and conflicts, Jerome's faith shone like a beacon in the darkness, his commitment to truth and righteousness unwavering in the face of opposition and adversity, the debates that raged around him, the insults and invectives that were hurled at him, only served to strengthen his resolve and deepen his convictions. His pen, mightier than the swords of his detractors, became a weapon of righteousness, a shield of faith, a staff of guidance for those who sought the narrow path of salvation. One night, as the flames of controversy licked at the walls of his cell and the echoes of dissent reverberated through the monastery, Jerome knelt in prayer, his heart heavy with the burden of conflict, his soul pierced by the arrows of doubt. In that moment of vulnerability, he heard a voice not the thundering voice of the mob nor the whispering voice of his detractors, but the still small voice of God speaking words of comfort and counsel, of reassurance and revelation. And so, fortified by divine grace, Jerome rose from his knees, his countenance radiant with a peace that surpassed understanding, a peace that transcended the tumult of theological strife and personal enmity. The controversies and conflicts that had threatened to engulf him now served as stepping stones to a higher plane of spiritual. In sight, a deeper well of compassion and wisdom that flowed from the source of all truth. In the annals of Christian history, the chapter of controversies and conflicts in Jerome's life would be remembered not as a tale of defeat or division, but as a triumph of faith and fortitude. His battles, both internal and external, had forged in him a soul of tempered steel, a heart of unyielding love, a mind of unassailable clarity. Jerome's legacy, amidst the storms of theological discord and personal animosity, emerged unscathed and sanctified, a beacon of light, in a world shrouded in shadows. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the terraced fields of Bethlehem, Jerome stood at the threshold of his earthly journey, his gaze fixed on the twilight sky that shimmered with a thousand hues of fire and shadow. The contours of his face, etched with the lines of years spent in contemplation and conflict, bore the imprint of a life fully lived, fully surrendered to the divine call that had guided him through desert wastelands and ecclesiastical battlegrounds, through triumphs and tribulations that had tested the metal of his spirit and the depth of his faith. Jerome's legacy was not merely a compilation of scholarly treatises or theological treatises. It was a tapestry woven with threads of sacrifice and struggle, of illumination and inspiration, of passion and compassion that had shaped the contours of Christian thought and practice for generations to come. His translation of the Bible into the language of the people, the Vulgate, became a cornerstone of Western civilization, a touchstone of religious devotion, a gateway to the sacred texts that had nourished and sustained the faithful for centuries. But Jerome's legacy was not confined to his literary achievements. It extended far beyond the ink and parchment of his scriptorium, far beyond the controversies and conflicts that had marked his earthly sojourn. His life, his words, his example became a beacon of light in a world shrouded in darkness, a guidepost for those who sought the narrow path of righteousness and truth in. 
an age of moral ambiguity and spiritual malaise. In the halls of the Roman Curia and the monasteries of Gaul, in the libraries of Alexandria and the palaces of Constantinople, Jerome's name was spoken with reverence, his work studied with awe, his memory cherished with affection. The scholarly hermit of Bethlehem had become a sage of the Christian tradition, a doctor of the church, whose writings shaped the contours of theological discourse and biblical exegesis for centuries to come. And as the years turned into decades, the memory of Jerome did not fade but grew brighter, like a star that blazes with undiminished intensity in the firmament of history. His feast day, celebrated with solemnity and joy on September 30th, became a time of reflection and rejoicing, of remembrance and renewal for those who sought to follow in his footsteps, to emulate his virtues, to honor his legacy. As the night descended upon Bethlehem, bathing the land in shadows and silence, Jerome bowed his head in gratitude, his heart overflowing with a peace that surpassed understanding, a joy that transcended sorrow. His journey from the idyllic hills of Striden to the sacred precincts of Bethlehem had been a pilgrimage of faith and learning, of sacrifice and service, of love and devotion that had brought him to the threshold of eternity with the assurance of a life well lived, a race well run, a legacy well established. In the annals of Christian history, Jerome's legacy would endure as a testament to the power of faith and intellect, of dedication and perseverance, of humility and holiness that could transform the life of a solitary scholar into a beacon of light that guided the faithful through the shadows of doubt and despair towards the radiant dawn of divine truth and grace. Jerome of Striden was canonized as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church after his death. Jerome died on September 30th for 20 AD. He was later recognized as a saint, but the exact date of his canonization is not clear. Saint Jerome's transformation from a renowned scholar to a revered saint was marked by his unwavering commitment to his faith and calling. After experiencing a spiritual awakening, Jerome devoted himself to a life of service and contemplation. He embraced solitude and ascetic practices, spending long hours in prayer and study. Saint Jerome's most enduring legacy lies in his monumental work as a translator of biblical texts. He undertook the task of translating the Bible into Latin, a project that would later become known as the Vulgate. This translation, commissioned by Pope Damasus, aimed to make the scriptures more accessible to the common people. As St. Jerome's reputation for scholarship and piety grew, so did his influence within the Christian community. He was known for his sharp intellect, sharp wit, and fearless defense of the faith. After his passing in for 20 AD, St. Jerome's contributions to Christianity were so significant that he was eventually canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. Today, St. Jerome is venerated as the patron saint of translators, librarians, and encyclopedists. His life serves as a testament to the power of knowledge, faith, and perseverance in the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment.